The first thing on the to-do list for today's show is to visit hideyourchildrenbook.com. My book is coming out in two months, guys, two months. This has seemed like a project that the um, result or the conclusion of this project would never come. This day, this publication day, has seemed so far off in the distance that it's very surreal that we are knocking on the door almost of publication day. My book, Hide Your Children, Exposing the Marxists Behind the Attack on America's Kids. I'm incredibly proud of this book. I've poured my heart and soul into this book. I think you guys are going to love it. The first half is I name the names of the people behind the capture of our institutions and the, the people behind the attack on America's kids. And the second half, I offer a solution. A solution, I will admit to you, is different than the solution the Republican Party is offering on how we can re- retake our institutions, reclaim those institutions, and protect America's kids. Go to hideyourchildrenbook.com. If you haven't already, why haven't you gotten your copy of Hide Your Children? Hideyourchildrenbook.com. Okay, a startling poll. This is a Gallup poll. Let me bring it up here. That shows that only 18% of young people in the United States of America, and young people I'm defining, or Gallup poll defined as between the ages of 18 and 34. So it's kind of a mix of Gen Z and millennials, an interesting mix. Gallup poll finds only 18% of young people aged 18 to 34 said that they are extremely proud to be American. This is so startling to me. You expect some woke millennials and some woke Gen Zers to have bought into, well, wokeness, anti-Americanism, but to have 82% of young people in the United States say that they're not extremely proud to be American, this blew my mind. And that's not, even, that's not even the part that surprised me the most. The part that shocked me the most is the comparison. If you look back, a, the same poll, the same questions were asked to people 10 years ago in 2013. Back in 2013, 85% of people between the ages of 18 and 29, so a little bit different age group, but this, the same, 85% said that they were extremely or very proud to be American. Sometimes there are incremental changes that happen culturally in our country, or people's viewpoints on certain topics change slowly over time, maybe based on an event, maybe based on some kind of cultural lobbying effort. But this is stunning. 85% minus 18%. That's the biggest change in public opinion on any topic that I've ever seen, ever. I'm not trying to sound hyperbolic. I just can't think of any topic that that large of a number of Americans have changed their mind on in that short of amount of time. It's shocking. It means that today, as you and I sit here, 82% of young people refuse to say that they're extremely proud to be American. And I, I read this poll earlier and I thought to myself, okay, first of all, let's deconstruct what's behind this. What caused such a significant shift in public opinion? So this this unheard of shift in public opinion, where it's 85, what is that, 75, 65, that's 60 seven point shift in the space of 10 years. And the conclusion is of course, indoctrination. Indoctrination is behind this because indoctrination works. The cultural indoctrination that we've been facing in almost, on almost every front has changed people's minds. It's been very effective. So first, I, I feel like millennials were the ones that were first hit with the, narr- the, the revisionist history narrative on Christopher Columbus, that Christopher Columbus, instead of being a great explorer, the one who discovered the United States of America before it was the United States of America for on behalf of European royalty, that he was some kind of imperialist, rapist, enslaver. Millennials, that's what we were indoctrinated with, right? That was the, that was the narrative that, that we were told. And the reason for that wasn't just to demonize or vilify this one person. It was to slowly start to change the collective, the everyone's minds, the collective feeling on whether the United States of America was founded for good reasons, and therefore whether or not our country in and of itself is legitimate or whether it's the word that they use now is stolen. So we had that. At the same time, millennials were hit with Howard Zinn's revisionist history of the United States, which also painted the United States as being imperialist, painted the United States as being built on white supremacy, painted the United States as this, this, as existing on top of stolen land in the immoral way, right? Now, you and I know that, yes, the early Americans, even even not both before the United States was established, but after we were established, yes, we did take land from Native American tribes. And you can argue about the morality of that, but the fact of the matter is that's that's the history of the world goes the same way. That is the history of the world. In fact, 
Native American tribes who occupied the land before we did stole it from other Native American tribes. So if you're going to criticize Americans for taking it from Native Americans, you should also criticize Native Americans from taking it from other Native Americans. But of course, they don't do that. Um, this was the this is the premise of Howard Zinn's revisionist history. And then you fast forward a little bit to just a couple years ago when the New York Times went a step further and they introduced the 1619 Project. And the 1619 Project wasn't just about white colonialists taking land from from Native Americans and thus beginning our legacy on on stolen of being a stolen country. It was painting all of the people who were citizens of the United States and every institution that our government was based on as being fundamentally racist, saying the United States was actually built entirely on the backs of slave labor. And this makes a difference, right? And that's not even that's not even the biggest push. The biggest push of all is the push for what's called anti-racism, which is anything but anti-racism. So we have the 1619 Project that told us that America's true founding was not in 1775 or 1776, but rather in 1619 when the first African slaves were forcibly brought to America, forcibly brought to the shores of what would be the United States of America. And on the back of this, we had this wave of what's called anti-racism that started being dropped in every institution from schoolrooms to corporate boardrooms to um, everywhere. You, could, you can't look away from it. It's the Ibram X. Kendi stuff that it's critical race theory, that you're racist if you're white and you're oppressed if you're black. And the idea of this wasn't just to say that white people are oppressors or white people are inherently racist or irredeemable. It's to propose this idea or to push this idea, to impose this idea on people that our country is so inherently racist because every institution in our nation was built on the backs of slaves and that the privilege that people who succeed via those institutions enjoy is only because they stole it from black people. The purpose of this is to delegitimize the United States of America. This has been what young people in our country have been subjected to for a decade now, a decade. So if you look at it that way, you think, well, is it any wonder that young people's minds changed so much in the space of 10 years, that it went from 85% of young people who said they were very or extremely proud of being American to now only 18% of young people say that they are extremely proud of being American. It's mind boggling to see that kind of cultural shift. My question, of course, for these young people is if you stop looking inwardly, don't just think about yourselves and what your life is. It's difficult, I think, for millennials, and this, is, this includes me, this is not a lecture, for millennials and, and Gen Zers to enjoy our prosperity because we are so prosperous we as a nation. We are so privileged. We have so much excess around us all the time. And we always have from the moment we were born that it's hard for us to fathom what real oppression or real marginalization or real deprivation feels like what real lack of opportunity feels like, what real discrimination feels like. And because of that, we're very susceptible to believing when someone tells us that we're marginalized because we're LGBTQ, even though if you're LGBTQ, if you identify like that, you can do whatever the heck you want in our country. Nobody's stopping you. No one's persecuting you. Hi guys, it's Liz Wheeler. Don't forget to watch my show, The Liz Wheeler Show, every night at 7 p.m. on The First TV. You can download the free First TV app or you can visit thefirsttv.com slash Liz and start watching today.